Something happened here. Hello, I'm Emmett Ryan, and uh, welcome to Ball in Europe, where you see there's a slight change to the backdrop, and not a deliberate one, i got to say. So, uh, before we get to the video today, which is all about Zelko Bradovic and about Dusan Ivkovic and why they both belong, uh, Zak and Duda, in the Naismith Hall of Fame, and why we should probably be talking about it a lot more than we do, which is currently we don't, a uh, little expl explainer. So, yeah, yesterday my mom had an issue. Her TV went on the blink, and my mom was in her 80s. Had to be a good son, had to go bring her the spare one that I keep there, which you're normally seeing the backdrop. Uh, my Nikola Jokic bobblehead uh, sadly fell victim there, so I'm going to try and get that fixed or replaced. But things aren't quite perfect in the backdrop right now. Uh, we're going to discuss why they belong there, why it's important for the Naismiths to actually recognize this, and also really just why, uh, you know, it's odd that we don't talk about it more and why it's probably a good thing that we should. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, always helps, and now let's get to the reasoning. So, yeah, uh, for me, the resumes are just such that this should be a long past debate, yet it's really a debate that's never happened. Duda, obviously RIP as well, he's in the FIBA Hall of Fame, but like, the Naismith is the Hall of Fame. It's the one we're referring to the Basketball Hall of Fame. That's the one we mean. And it's just kind of weird. So discuss. I'm, I'm going to discuss the weirdness, though, in the next section. So let's just discuss, though, the actual resumes here. Dude, I may, I'll go with first, given I mentioned him. Like, has a World Championship, what we now call a World Cup. A couple of, three Euro baskets, I think, if I'm keeping track right. A couple of Euro League titles as a coach. But also, beyond that, is, like, sort of seen as the architect for... Uh, what we call former Yugoslavia, that Balkan region really of uh, coaching and basketball and very much part of those foundational uh, pieces really in how the sport is played today uh, in Europe and how it's expanded beyond. Like His influence has gone far beyond where he coached and obviously he didn't just coach uh, in, in the region. He coached like you know in Greece, he had a brief stint in uh, FS even. But like Duda's influence far and wide coupled with his success resume to me it's a pretty no-brainer. And with Zok, it's quite similar. Like, because with Obradovic, I suppose people forget because it is so long ago. And by the way, this is actually kind of what part of the inspiration is. Javi Gansedo did a post on Twitter uh, about, like, you know, Zok's success at Real Madrid in the three seasons he was there. And then pointing out just how long ago it was <laughs> that that was the case. Because obviously Zok got into coaching fairly young by coaching standards. At least back then, like, he was 31 or 33 uh, he was young anyway when he first started coaching. And obviously he's won at so many different places. And again, with Zok, you kind of go, well, like, yeah, he has the nine early titles. He has a World Championship slash World Cup. He's, you know, done many other things. Like, his trophy cabinet is lol-tacularly lol big. Uh, so, when we're talking about raw achievements, like, they both have farcical amounts. And again, Obradovic, quite an interesting coaching tree. The one that jumps out for most people is Atutis. Again, very successful. And he's already a very influential coach for a lot of his peers. Uh, and like Ivkovic as well. Like I think when you're judging coaches, it is that combination. Do they have the success and do they have the influence? And in both the cases of Obradovic and Ivkovic, I mean... It, it's like these. That's, this is what's jumping out to me. They're no-brainer choices. Like I mean, it's very strange to me that Duda never got in, uh, as in while he was still alive, he can still get in, obviously, uh, you know, posthumously. But it was very strange to me just thinking about this the other day that Duda never got in while alive, because like again, like we're, we're talking about crazy, crazy resumes, and you might go, well, this that to do with Europe. We're going to address it in the next section. But we have seen European coaches in there before. Gomelski, Nikolic, uh, there's a couple of others. Like, you've gotten in with resumes that, again, weren't staggeringly different, I would say, to the two men we're discussing here when you're weighing it all in in terms of influence and uh, success resumes. So, it's like, yeah, okay. These two, like, the case is there. Like, they have all the titles you want. They have the international success and, like, for me, winning a World Cup as a coach and you're coaching anyone other than the United States automatically gets you in the conversation. And uh, you might go, well, doesn't that mean Gordy Herbert's in the conversation? Yes, I didn't say it gets you in, but it should get you in the conversation. And I don't feel Duda or Branovic have even been in the conversation yet, which for me is kind of mad. And by Scariolo, before you go, what about him? Of course he belongs in the conversation, but we're focusing on just the two lads today, okay? Tell me who else should be getting in this conversation in the comments. Now on to the second section. Why it actually is relevant that the Naismith, in particular, recognizes them. 
So, the Naismith Hall of Fame is unlike most Halls of Fame. Like, the Hall of Fame concept really is an American thing, which is spread far and wide. Lots of other places do it now. And other places have their various formats on it. But when it comes to it, it's like, it is a goal to recognize all levels of basketball. So it's not just the NBA, which the, say, the Pro Football Hall of Fame is just the NFL. And there's a separate one for the College Football Hall of Fame. And, like, baseball has just a one Hall of Fame as well. And it's got to great details to make sure it brings in all the different eras. And has even adjusted its criteria to make sure it's recognizing different types of leagues that were going on uh, in the past. Uh, hockey as well is all of hockey as well. And, uh, you know, I've been to, that's actually the only Hall of Fame I've been to, by the way, the Hockey Hall of Fame. A little disappointed because I just thought there'd be more exhibits in it than there were. Uh, of the of the four major halls of fame, but the Naismiths always had this where the all of basketball focus, like with FIBA, might be the the all of international basketball focus. It's one very very new by comparison, and two just doesn't have the same level of recognition. Like the Hall of Fame is the Naismith, it's the one we all talk about, and yeah, it has recognized coaches that have before, but it also recognizes college coaches and. I think we've clearly reached a stage now where it's recognised that like winning in Euroleague is a bigger achievement than winning the NCAA championship. Like I'm not trying to diminish college coaches here, but like it's more a case of if college coaches can get in, then surely we should be looking at the best doing it in other parts of the world at the coaching level. And when you're looking for two prime candidates who should be in there, like Duda and Zoc, just scream of ticking all the boxes. Like, neither ever went to coach in the US. That's a good thing for the Hall of Fame to be acknowledging that not all basketball is within North America, that basketball is a global game. Like, the Hall of Fame has this global purpose. It's trying to recognize all of basketball. And that's why it jumps out to me that it's so, so strange that the Hall of Fame hasn't gone out of its way to, frankly, honor more Europeans at the coaching level uh, when it comes to honoring them, because... It's a good way of like telling the story of basketball as a whole, because it's very easy to tell just the NBA story. I mean, it's complex, but by co- you know, but compared to telling the whole story of basketball, it's you know, it's a short story by comparison. Like basketball's such a broad, fascinating story, especially because we have the right rarity with this sport that we can literally have the birthday for it. Like that is not normal in sports. Like I think basketball fans appreciate that. Uh, but we have to occasionally remind ourselves of that. We know when the first ever game of basketball was played. Uh, and so that global reach is something that, you know, brings this all together, brings it all back in. And so that's why I'm always kind of going, how have we not? Like, so yeah, it's like to me, the, the, you know, the Naismith, if you probably go, but they didn't do it in the NBA, huge, huge swathes of members of the basketball, of the, of the basketball hall of fame, the Naismith hall of fame, never, did a moment in the NBA. The NBA is not the be-all and end-all of basketball, including when it comes to being recognized by the Hall of Fame. So yes, the Naismith is a relevant body here when it comes to assessing the performances and the influence of Obradovich and Ivkovich. But one other thing has stood out to me here when I was thinking over this, doing this video a few days ago, and it's this. This is sort of an odd one, because I not I didn't think about it until I saw Javi's tweet. It's like, oh yeah, like, is there something I'm missing that's stopping Obradovich being in the Hall of Fame? That's stopping Duda being in the Hall of Fame? Like, I said, Scariola will certainly get, make, make mention for that as well at some point. And I just, you know, went looking up, and I looked at the Hall of Fame criteria, and I looked at the history of other coaches getting in. And while there aren't many European coaches that have gotten in, that, that some have, to me, is almost a sign of, did we just decide that we'll have a couple of contributors and stop making any noise? Because, like, look, I'm sure for Zach, Zach being Zach is a matter to Zach, you know, getting to do his thing. Like, Hall of Fame would be nice. But I think even Zach is going to go with me. Yeah, but it'd be great if Duda got in. Uh, and I'd be right there. I think, I think Zach would be right there with me. I think Zach should be in as well, just to be clear. But, like, I think Zach would be of that mentality that Duda should definitely be in there. And I think it's a good way of showing the game as a global sport. Uh, I really do. And I think more people like me, frankly, uh, but like you as well, the commenters, uh, and like the other journalists in basketball that exist both within and without uh, the North American sphere uh, should be having this conversation saying, like, what do we want the Hall of Fame to recognize? Because if we're going to recognize the college level success, if we're going to recognize, you know, even D3 college level success can get recognized there. If we're going to recognize, you know, the contributors in 
off the court roles, even away from coaching roles, which is great. Why shouldn't we be recognizing those who've had an influence on the sport beyond North America? And like, there's no denying the sheer raw influence. Like, the the CVs of both is farcical, like absolutely farcical. Like, o- Obradovic alone as a coach, his coaching success is greater than all but one Euro League team ever. If I'm doing the math right, I may be wrong. I'll correct myself in a in a caption if I am wrong. Uh, but I'm pretty certain Real Madrid's the only EuroLeague team with more titles than he has as a coach. Uh, you know, and he's done it across so many places. Ivkovic obviously won both his quite far apart with the same team, but again, had that international success as well. And again, that huge, huge influence just as a coach on coaching and basketball and how basketball is played. So it's like, why aren't we talking about this more? Like, really? Uh, you know, I could even see why, like, you know, Serbian, in, in, um, in particular, journalists don't, because for them, just recognising them within Serbia, you know, is good enough. And, you know, much love to my Serbian friends. I totally get that. Like, you know, I'm giving you guys a complete pass. You folks a complete pass. Uh, although, at the same time, feel free to join in. Seriously, you're, uh, please jump on this train. You belong on it as much as anybody else if you want to be on it. Uh, but I think a lot of us should be making a lot more noise about it. So this is some sort of pan euro journalism working together thing is like let's get those of us in basketball outside of the nba sphere covering it to be a bit louder about recognizing the greats from outside the nba when it comes to their lifetime achievements like i think with the cvs of zach again i said a world cup nine euro leagues a crazy number of other trophies uh Duda also got a World Cup, has a two Euro Leagues, and again, a lot of other trophies, but again, enormous influence. Uh, yeah, I think we should all all be talking about that a lot more and be saying, listen, this recognition matters. Basketball is not just a North American sport. The biggest league is there. Yeah, biggest league, no question. The majority of people recognized by the Hall of Fame should make their bones in the NBA, but the Hall of Fame clearly has a purpose to recognize more beyond that and it's i think we should we because we tend to see it limited to playing contributors in that respect internationally and i think we've really got to open our eyes to realize it is more than that and recognize more coaches for what they've done and bring them in more so i hope you all like my impassioned plea uh let's get us all chatting about this and uh, yeah listen if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and until monday when i will return i will see you soon